Hello everyone, this is your five and welcome to the Global Master Tutorial video. And today, sorry, we're looking at the 2007 release by Hasbro of the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe action figure review. And today's action figure review, we're looking at the Cobra Emperor Serpento. Now, I got this straight from eBay and this cost me about 40 ringgit with shipping. A bit more pricier compared to the retail pricing, I know. But I started collecting G.I. Joe in late 2008 and this figure came out in late 2007 in Malaysia, of course. And by the time I got into, well, G.I. Joe collection, this figure was long sold out and a lot of those specialty toy shops near my area never restock this figure. So I was forced to get this straight from eBay by paying a little bit extra cost there, which is a pity, you know. Now, let's take a look at the front part badging. You notice the fonts and the edges there are all very shiny stuff. Very nice. Corner here, we have the 25th anniversary logo. At the bottom is the year from 1982 to 2007. Here we have a nice little artwork of Spanto. And this version of artwork is actually a new artwork for Spanto here. Because the original Spanto that was released in 1986 didn't actually came in a single card of form, but actually packed in with a vehicle called the Air Chariot. And the, that version of artwork is completely different compared to this one. And from this version of Serpento's artwork, bears resemblance to the IDW's G.I. Joe comics because due to this helm there, and it doesn't have that snake part behind him. Very nicely done. Here in the packaging, you can see in the bubble now we have the figure and next to him is the sword and at the bottom you have the dual blade behind the figure is the base stand let's take a look at the back portion of the packaging you notice this is released in 2007 and a lot of the figures here is just starting to appear in this wave itself so a lot of figures weren't released yet here at the bottom is the profile card, you go at the top section there, stating Cobra Emperor, codename Serpanto. Here we have a smaller artwork, same artwork in the front there. Here we have a smaller write-up, and stated a secret cabal of Cobra scientists under the direction of the interrogator and Deathstroke, which is incorrect. Cobra Commander wanted to, well, wanted Dr. Mindbender to create a perfect soldier using the DNA of the greatest warriors in the history, Instead, Dr. Mindbender well, took the DNAs from the greatest leaders in the history, um, of course with the help of Destro, and created a panto instead. So this section here is actually incorrect. So let's continue on. Stated, comb the tombs, sarcophagi, and relics of the great despots of history to find cells with DNA traces. From this long dead genetic blueprints, they produced a composite clone with the military genius of Napoleon, the ruthlessness of Julius Caesar, the daring of Hannibal, and the physical acumen of Attila the Hun, the ultimate Cobra Emperor. A master of political intrigue and a brilliant tactician, he is capable of wresting power from Cobra Commander, which is which is true, of course. Fortunately for the G.I. Joe team, the Cobras Cobra Empress' own ambitions was, were not taken into consideration by his creators, which is also true. Now at the bottom here, someone quote, His eyes has, have seen the legions of Rome trample the Gauls and Navi into the dust. His hand lifted the horsehair baton, then signaled the first charge of the Carta Carthaginian, I think that's how it's pronounced, armed elephant phalanx. His ears have heard the rattle of French Curaçao's Corusils on the streets of Moscow, but in his mind we must fear the most. The thoughts of the Cobra Emperor have not drifted from global conquest since the reign of King Solomon. Very nice. So, without further ado, let's open up this packaging so we can molest the figure. Be right back. And we're back on the ring figure and the rest of the stuff out from packaging. Now let's take a look at Serpento's accessories here. First we have the 25th anniversary version of the Cobra Bay stand. Got a nice little Cobra logo on the top with one peg for the figure to stand on. And the nameplate there stated as code name Spanto. And at the back here stated 2007 has been made in China. Now Spanto's accessories is very unique to this figure. You can technically call it as new because it's not being shared among a lot of other figures except for Spanto and two other versions of him as well. First we have his dual blade. Now this is a very nice accessory. 
As you can see, the only paint job for this dual plate is at the handle that is, which is painted in black. The entire thing is just pure grey plastic material. Very nicely done. Really wish they actually paint this. Next we have his sword. Now the sword is rather thick on the sides here. Rather thick sword. And the entire blade is not painted. It's pure grey plastic material. The hilt and the handle is painted in gold. Very nice. A little bit bleeding on to the blade itself and the edges there, but it's still alright. It's a pity that you can't actually store the sword onto the figure itself because there's no sheath to store the sword in. Then we have his cape. Now the cape is actually made of actual cloth, as in green here. Very nice. And it's supported by these two silver strings, as you can see there. And in between the strings itself is this snake shoulder pads with pegs. The pegs is supposed to connect to the figure's shoulders. Now the snake shoulder pads here is painted in green, dark green, and the eyes are painted in black. A little bit of smudge, but it's still alright. Nicely done. Then we have his helmet, the snake helmet, which is not painted at all. It's pure plastic color in gold. The, each side of the fang is painted in silver. But I really wish they do more paint job for this entire helm. It should have a nice paint job of gold there. But, well, I can always paint it later. The scalp of the helm is very nicely done. It has the snake eyes on each side. You got the scales there that goes all the way to the back. Very nicely done. Then we have his skirt. Now the skirt here, you have the button that connects to this section. The button is painted in black. And the rings is painted in silver. And you can see the belt is painted in dark green. So does the entire portion of the belt itself. The rivets are painted in silver. They are a little bit bleeding at the back and the, on the sides as well. From the green paint job bleeding to the straps there. But most of the time you won't be able to notice, it, notice this because the bleeding is at the back and it's covered by the cape. The skirt, when worn onto the figure, hinders his articulation on the hips. Now, speaking of the figure, let's take a look at Spantor's paint job. Now, half of the amount of the paint job is not painted at all, it's just pure plastic color. The entire head is painted, of course. The eyebrows are painted in black, so that's the pupils there. Now, the problem is, is that the eyebrows paint job is not really well done. He looks rather sad looking, actually. The neck is painted in flesh tone skin. He's rather pale looking. Now, the arms, crotch, and the thighs are all plastic material color. It's supposed to be gold, but because it's plastic color, it looks kind of cheap. The only paint job on the torso is on the chest here is painted in gold very nice the glove here is painted in dark green but the rings around it is pure plastic color as you can see now now the knees the kneecaps here the green colors are all plastic material color only in between they actually painted in gold very nice now the bottom of the knees here is painted in gold but the boots the entire green boots is not painted except for the straps there and the shin guard and the rivets are painted in silver for the rivets and the entire straps and the guard there are painted in gold now for the boots here you can see the boots is actually made of black plastic material color so they actually painted the entire boots here very nice now let's take a look at the figure's mold the mold is actually technically new mold none of the G.I. Joe figures or Cobra figures actually share any of the Serpentos mold which is a good thing that makes Serpento quite unique in his style he's got a nice little head sculpt and he's bald as you can see there I've never seen him bald in the Marvel comics he's, and the IDW comics for the G.I. Joe comics he actually has hair not too sure why they actually skipped that part he actually has hair I really wish I just can't look away at the sad looking eyebrows but still the scalp is very nice so does the neck there as well problem is the neck is sort of tilted downwards a little bit I really wish it's straight 
the body armor is actually quite nicely done with the details there. You can see the scales and the muscles. Very nice. A lot of muscle tones. Glove is nicely done as well. The ties is look it looks pretty bland looking. And I really don't like the crotch area. It's, it looks very small. Kneecaps is very nicely done with the details. So does the lower legs there. Very nicely done. The boots here or the feet here doesn't look very interesting. Not a lot of details, just a little bit of details. I really wish they actually well put more effort into the paint job to make him look really great. Now let's take a look at the figure's articulation. The head can pivot upwards, straight, and turn 360 degrees. Torso here can move forward a little bit, back a little bit, and turn 360 degrees. Shoulders here can turn 360 degrees and lift the shoulders all the way up this far. Elbow joint bend this far, bend backwards and turn 360 degrees. Wrist joint here can turn 360 degrees. Now the hip joints is something I really hate because due to the cut of the crotch area, he can barely even move forward because it, the moment you move forward, it stretches all the way outwards. So this is a really bad crotch area because the, due to the really tiny cuts. Now the legs can actually spread all the way out but forward is a problem. Double jointed knee that bends this far and ankle joint that bends about down, up and then 360 degrees. Very nice. Now let's equip Serpento with all his accessories. Now let's start off by equipping Serpento with the skirt. It's quite easy to actually equip Serpento with all his accessories. Clip in the button like so, and he's done on the skirt. Next, we'll clip on the shoulder pads. The snake always need to be face outwards rather than inwards. done. Next we place the helm to the head. I would suggest placing a helm a little bit lower down covering the eyebrows so you wouldn't be able to see his sad eyebrows thus making it look much more well a bit more better than what originally intended to. Placing the weapon onto his hands. Now one thing I forgot to mention is both the hands for Serpento is bent downwards like so. It's not straight. And another problem is the shoulder pads. The peg don't actually it's not thick enough for the pegs to stuff into the hole, so it tends to be a bit loose. Place him onto the base stand. And there you have it. That is a panto. Now the figure is just averagely okay. There are a major problem with the hip joints there because the crotch area, the cuts, is not really well done. Thus, when you want him to move the legs forward you tend to twist the entire leg to the sideways which is a really really bad point there furthermore the eyebrows that's painted onto Serpento's forehead looked really really weird as if he's very sad looking now the paint job is okay it's typical for the GI Joe figures to have liking on some certain parts of the paint job but I really don't like the very loose pegs on the shoulder pads here, the snake sh shoulder pads there. They tend to pop off really too easily. And then the hands, both the hands aim downward like so. So he would have a really weird way on posing sometimes, especially on the hands part. Otherwise the figure seemed to be very average, less than average actually thanks to the crotch area so if I'm gonna give a rating out of this I would say I'll give it a 4 out of 10 
yes a 4 out of 10 for Serpento here and I thank you all for watching this is Lucy05 and I'm signing off